happy to be here to present on a vulnerable topic, rejection in adoption. The pieces that I thought about from my professional and personal experience being an adoptee. Let's first talk about what is the real pain of rejection that the adopted person experiences? This may be challenging for those that are adoptees here today and know that take the time to self-care, take care of yourself. If you're hearing or feeling something for the first time, that something strikes a nerve or a feeling, that's okay. You're learning and you're making sense. For parents and professionals, also you may have aha moments, understanding how rejection compromises the self-esteem of an adopted person who's been in foster care. Adoptees do experience a real painful loss, a personal loss and traumatic loss, and that is the separation from their birth mother, which equates to the feeling of rejection. Why? Because babies and children are egocentric. The world revolves around them. When something happens to them, that significant first mother, birth mother, makes a decision and makes that choice to make a plan for adoption. For the adult brain, it makes sense. But for the child brain, for the infant brain, it creates this sense of there must have been something wrong with me. I was rejected. And that's an egocentric way of being in the world. And it starts very early. This is a belief system that starts early on. They know they have been placed, handed over, given away, separated by and from their own family of origin. And now they're with a new family. They know they will not be returned, reunited, or reunified with their long lost family. Many families are doing open adoption today, but not all of them. We still have closed states with closed records and many adoptees do not know their families of origin. They may not have the opportunity to reunify, have a reunion, even be in an open adoption. They are often not searched for. A lot of adoptees that I talk to as a therapist, they wish, their secret wish is, I wish they would search for me because that would mean that I'm wanted. They want to be desired, sought out, or celebrated by their own tribal ancestors just as anyone who remained with their families of origin, there's a celebration of their birth. But for adoptees, there's a celebration and there's a separation and it's a goodbye day. It has this ebb and flow. They will personalize this experience. If left untreated, they can feel confused, unlovable, unwanted, unworthy, defective, forgotten, unimportant, left out, excluded, let go, and abandoned unless deemed otherwise. So why don't adoptees talk about their grief? They are petrified of rejection. They worry that if someone knew how needy or hurting they were inside, they may be rejected all over again. This is true even in the best adoptive homes and families and the fear of rejection with the fear of hurting their adoptive parents' feelings and often the grief goes underground. So the inner life of the adoptee often questions, and this can go on and on for years and recycling these questions, especially if they're not getting answers, especially if no one's acknowledging and accepting that they have these questions. Why did she leave me? What could I have done to have stayed? How could anyone give away their baby? There must be something wrong with me. What have I done wrong? Am I damaged? I have a birthmark on my leg and I was not told my story, why I did not remain with my birth family. And do you know what I told myself? It's because of my birthmark. I was damaged. And I sat with that for years, four years, because no one was helping me make sense. So I then blamed myself. See, this is the reason. I'm wrong, I'm deficient. Am I good enough is the question. Am I valuable? Who wants me? So common rejection sensitivity, coping protective behaviors. Protective behaviors are protecting against feeling the feelings of rejection 
or, and or grief and loss associated with. What we often see symptomatically is there's a lashing out of fight or flight that can occur with rage, anger, an anxious emotional withdrawal and repression and even over the top people pleasing behaviors. So these are symptoms if you can recognize, wow, I think maybe the adoptee I'm working with or I have this behavior or my child has this behavior, they may have rejection sensitivity, neediness, clinginess for fear of losing their attachment figure because they're protecting the attachment. I need to know that you want me, that you are holding me and keeping me close. Perfectionism. This is a very common trait for adoptees. The thought of being wrong or doing something not well can feel debilitating, excruciatingly painful. The disappointment of disappointing others is hard to bear. And that's why sometimes adoptees have difficulty taking responsibility for their behavior. Because if they take responsibility for their behavior, then that means there's something wrong about them. Laziness, just giving up, not trying at all or to avoid a possible failure. And often adoptees, when they have high rejection sensitivity, don't wanna be around people because just being around people, there's the probability of the possibility that I will be rejected and I just cannot subject myself to it. So I'm just going to withdraw and protect myself from these feelings that are very powerful and overwhelming to feel. Self-esteem is compromised. They can feel not good enough, need a lot of validation. I always tell parents, you will not create a narcissist because the validation goes in one ear and it goes out another shoot. It doesn't stick until the thousandth time. We need to hear over and over where someone's excited to see us. Someone wants to spend time with us. Someone wants to hear our voice. We need to know that we are loved, wanted, seen, heard, and received over and over and over. Difficulty interpreting other person's facial expressions, tone of voice, body language, because they are constantly looking for signs of being judged or rejected. So there's a hypervigilance that's going on. I need to know, are you safe or not safe? There's a push-pull. I'll bring it close, but only so close in the relationship because I need to protect myself, my core self that feels rejection. 